Tell somebody, if you want to make it through, it depends on what you're willing to do. Mm -hmm. What are you willing to do to make it? Are you willing to praise him? Are you willing to get on your knees all through the night and say, Jesus, I need you. I know you was planning to go to the buffet and all you can eat place. But are you planning to go on a fast? What are you willing to do? Are you willing to give up that boyfriend? Are you willing to give up that girlfriend? Are you willing to do what you have to do to make it through? Are you willing to come to Sunday school? Are you willing to press your way? Sometimes, gotta tell you something. You're not doing what you gotta do. Lord, why? Why it seem like it ain't working out for me, Lord? You ain't, you gotta do more. Uh Uh-oh. See, we want God just to come down and do everything. Mm -hmm. We just want God to just take my hand and lead me on. So y'all getting happy? Yeah, that's what I want. But some God, sometimes time God to say, no, buddy boy, you got to do what you got to do. Oh, if you got to live alone. Oh, uh-oh. That's why, that's why you lose most of them. Because I can't be without my man. Ooh, I just like the way he hold me. I like the way he roll me. I like the way he mold me. But is he helping you stay safe? Is he coming to church with you? I don't see him. <laughs> Let me calm down. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stop. I act too crazy. I'm just, God, pray Mother Lane, please pray. You raised a crazy son. You know, I don't know what you did to me. It's that government cheese mess my brain up. You got to, oh, you going to be like Ahab. <laughs> that powder milk, mother, come on. Mess me up. I'm not the same. <laughs> First Kings 21. Look at this. And Ben-Hadad represents the devil. Gathered all his hosts together, and it was a bunch of the demons. And brought all the horses, and brought all his weapons, uh, and he besieged Samaria. He besieged the city. In other words, he cut off all the resources. So they were being drained. They were being sifted. Uh huh. So Ben Hadad, the Bible says, he warred against Ahab, who was the king of Israel. And do you know the devil is launching attacks against us? You know, and, and you know, the devil don't fight like girls fight. Y'all know how women fight, it's uncalculated. Some, oh, nowadays they like this. Y'all been watching that UFC and stuff. But, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. You know, it's just they close their eyes, they, they, they put their head down, and they... Come on. I hate to bust you out. That's how my sister used to fight. Come on. All you had to do was move out the way. She... Come on, she'll knock herself out. Poop. Some of y'all women fight, but the devil don't fight like that, y'all. He don't close his eyes and swing. It's calculated. It's strategic. He's launching a calculated, strategic attack. Every time he attack you, it's well planned, it's well plotted, and it's well executed. 
That's the devil you fighting, man. He launched attacks against Ahab. And 1 Kings 22 and 3, uh, he sent a message. You know, for, before the devil hit you, sometimes he'll send you messages because he want to scare you. He want to defeat you before he even launched the attack against you. He sent a message to King Ahab. Some of y'all, he's sending you messages of depression. He's sending you messages of discouragement. And some of y'all receiving those messages. You don't have to receive every message. It's like Yahoo and AOL. Come on now, in Gmail. You can choose whether to open it up or not. And some of y'all, you open it up and it's a spam. Come on. Y'all know what a spam is. Come on now, the devil's sending you messages and you open it up and it's a virus and you receive that message. You don't have to receive the message, but he sent the message to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city. And he said unto him, thus said Ben-Adad, he said, thy silver and thy gold is mine. Y'all know the enemy will say that. He, he'll say it's mine. Come on now. Look at somebody say the devil will say it's mine. Hey, if he want to sleep, tell him to sleep over there because we on TV now. Tell him to go to sleep right in the corner. If y'all want to go to sleep, go to sleep in the corner out the camera. Come on now. Back to my message. I'm serious. Tell him to go ahead and sleep over there. Y'all got to teach these. Okay. So what he's saying is thy silver and thy gold is mine. He said your wives is mine. Your children is mine. The goodliest, everything you got is mine. You, you know the devil will tell you your joy is mine. You know the devil will tell you your peace is mine, your children is mine, your husband is mine. Come on now. The devil telling some of y'all it's mine. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, how will you respond to what the devil is saying? You know what Ahab said? Look at 1 Kings 24. He said, as you say, my Lord, O king, I am yours and all that I have. That's sad. He told the devil, you can have it. It's yours. My children are yours. They acting so crazy, I don't want them anyway. You can have them. My marriage is yours. My money, you know what? My, 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 my joy is yours. My peace. Some of y'all just giving the devil stuff. You're giving in to his threats. Ahab told the enemy, you can have it. See, when you refuse to praise God, guess what? You're telling the devil you can have it. When you refuse to trust in the Lord, you're telling the devil you can have it. When you refuse to live holy, you're telling the devil you can have it. When you refuse to fight, you're telling the devil you can have it. The devil can't have me. I belong to Jesus. His hands don't belong on me. My body belongs to God. My joy belongs to God. Some of you ought to muster up enough kahunas to tell the devil you can't touch. Come on. The devil got his dirty, nasty, Filthy, gooky, disgusting, musty hands all over you. What if I st stuck my hand into some horse manure and rubbed it all over you? That's the way the devil doing some of y'all. All in your head. All in your situations. All in all, you can just see, you don't see no peace. You don't see no joy. You don't see no victory. You walk like you defeated. Like we back in the slavery days. I don't know if you got the memo, but we're free. We're not slaves anymore. Oh, but you could be so used to being a slave. You could be so used to being bound. Do you know when we got set free, there was some slave, they chose to stay in the cotton field? 
Even though Massa was beating them, even though Massa was treating them bad, they had to wear one pair of shoes for a whole year. They had one pair. They eyes don't it's scary. I stare. I used to the fear. Massa said, "I got to man, you free man. Don't you know your bit? I just so used to. I don't know what else to do but to fix this car. I don't know it. Man, you free. Look at the sun. My God, choose a direction." and go as you can do whatever you want to do. The Bible says whom the son set free is free indeed. What's wrong with you? We're not slaves anymore. This is not the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament. Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and he set you free. Your joy, your peace, your happiness is yours. Why are you walking around sad? Why are you walking around defeated? Huh? Why are you walking around looking disgusted? Huh? Why are you walking around looking like you just got beat down? Huh? Look at somebody say, don't you realize that you are free and whom the Son set free? Huh? It wasn't Malcolm X that set you free. Huh? It wasn't Martin Luther King that set you free. Huh? But it was Jesus Christ. Huh? And he set me free. Huh? And the devil, huh? he got to take his nasty, dirty hand. Get your hands off me, devil. Because I'm... You got to tell the devil, get your hands out of my mind. Because I'm, I'm not married to you anymore. When Jesus died on the cross, we got a divorce and I remarried. I married Jesus. So my body don't belong to you. My house don't belong to you. My mind don't belong to you. So you can't touch this. But Jesus uh, can touch me. Uh, Jesus uh, can do whatever he want with me. Uh, because I belong to him. Uh, and he belong to me. Uh, and I belong to him. Uh, and he belong to me. Uh, my situation belong to him. Uh, my problems belong to him. Uh, my issues belong to him. Uh, my hurts belong to him. Uh, it's his. I run out of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me give an illustration. Ah, the Bible says that we are the bride. That means that Jesus is the groom. But Jesus is flawless. Without fault. He did no sin. Neither was God found in his mouth. But we the bride. And you know how us brat, y'all, y'all, she look like she got on a wedding gown now, you know. All she need is a little thing right there. Come on, Deacon Garner. So what I'm saying, they look all beautiful. They cover up all the blemishes. And when they walk down an aisle, oh, they look so flawless. Uh-huh. But then after you've been married for a while, you find out their credit is bad. They have four kids and they didn't tell you. That beautiful bride got a lot of mess. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you are a messy, dirty bride. But Jesus married you anyway, knowing all your business. You can be seated. Jesus married your dirty, ugly self. I'm not saying physically ugly. But spiritually so, you was ugly. Oh, you was a big old mess. And he was flawless. I said you was a mess. And Jesus was flawless. But he married you anyway. I was a mess. But Jesus was flawless. And guess what Jesus said? He said, I do. God said, you're going to have to go to the cross. You're going to have to suffer. Jesus said, I do. They said they're going to ridicule you. They're going to mock you. Jesus said, I do. They said they're going to put a crown of thorns on your head. They're going to beat you so till your mama won't recognize you. Jesus said, I 
I do. God said, you're going to have to die. Jesus said, I do. And he did. And because he did, you're married to him. And because he did, the devil can't do it. I'm over my time. There's some stuff he just can't do. You're allowing him to do it. There's some places he just can't go unless you open the door. And that's your problem. You keep opening the door. And let me tell you something. If you open the door, the devil's going to come in. The saints used to teach us, don't let the devil ride. Because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. Pastor Lane used to say, if you let him take an inch, he'll take a mile. You can't give the devil nothing. You can't give him a crack. Not one iota. You got to keep the devil out. Let me tell you something. You can't be like Ahab. Don't give in. Don't give in. Don't give in. Because if you give in, then the devil wins. You can stand to your feet. God will help you through it. Ahab intimidated. Ahab timid, fearful, weak, frail, afraid Ahab. Ben Hadad sent a message and he gave in. The devil got in his head. The worst thing you can do is listen to what the devil is saying. Let the devil control your mind. That's a sad situation when the devil get in your head. Because if he can get in your head, he can control everything else about you. Ahab gave in. He said, you can have my wives. You can have my children. You can have it. Guess what Ben Hadad did? He said, wow, if you're going to give me that, I'm going to take some more. So Ben Hadad sent a message. He said, I'm going to send my people. They're going to go in your house. And whatever is valuable, whatever they like, they're going to take it. They have said, no, nah, I can't do that. He, the, he talked to the elders. He talked to some mature people. They said, Ahab.